Hello guys, Moritz here and today we are going to finish up the fan control of the power inverter. Next we are going to connect an Arduino to this wire here and hook it up to the 5 volt rail so we can power that and we will also connect the temperature sensor and the temperature sensor we will put on to one of these transformers because those are the ones that get hot first to get a temperature reading off and then we are going to turn on the fans according to the temperature to cool down the whole unit. Next we want to prepare our microcontroller and for that we want to solder on the temperature sensor as well as some wires for connecting power to it. So let's do that now. So I will get some red wire for the positive connection. That should be enough. Some more for the temperature sensor. Should also be enough. And some black wire for the negative connection. I want to keep that the same length like the red cables. So and the other one it's that. And we also want some blue cable for the data wire to the temperature sensor. So next we want to get rid of the plastic. That's the last one and now we will twist the wires a little bit before pre-soldering them. For the temperature sensor we'll also need a 4.7 kilo ohm resistor like this one here. Those are some SMD ones. Now we'll solder on those too. So let's start with the temperature sensor. The pinout of this one is from left to right ground the data pin and on the right side 5 volts. The temperature sensor also works with 3.5. 3 volts as well so you can use either of that so I will just connect it to 5 volts since we have 5 volts in the inverter and what we also need to do is to connect the resistor between pin 2 and 3 so the rightmost pins and I will use for that this SMD one so let's solder that on with the trick we used before so we get our thing here put this in we need to separate the legs a little bit and bend them over so we can put the resistor on there so I got some tweezers to use with the resistor so first we will put on some solder and also some weight on it so it doesn't move around so much so we put some solder right up here and take the resistor it's not that easy with these large tweezers so there I have it and now I will solder it on that's it on there solder the other side and re-solder the right side and yeah that's the resistor next we want to connect our wires we will use these three so let's pre-solder them heat them up Next, we will bend those wires back and cut them a little bit shorter, like this. So we will put this in here, right like this, and get some solder on the VCC pin and solder our cable to it. Then we'll get the data pin cable and put on some solder on the data pin and as well on the ground pin. So there goes that. And we also take our ground wire and solder it onto the last pin. Then we will take our shrink tube and cut some pieces of that. And the bigger one for the ground connection. Feed those on the cables. And then shrink them with a little bit of heat from the soldering iron. That's the temperature sensor done. Then we want to connect the sensor to digital pin 7. That's the one up here. And the fan will go to digital pin 6 afterwards. So we'll just use this trusty thing again. Put it in the hole for pin 7. Get some solder and solder that on there. Then let's solder on the ground, which is right here. And the last connection to VCC. Now we also get in the wires that go to the 5 volts. So another ground cable to here. And actually let's 
to get that wire out again and twist those together because they will both be 5 volts. That should do it. And there we have it. Let's just get rid of some of the wires and yeah that's all the connections done and now we can move on to connect it to the inverter and see if it works. Now we get our microcontroller and we'll connect it up to the 5 volts buck converter and we'll connect the base of the transistor to, to it. I also wrapped some flame retardant tape around the temperature sensor to isolate it a little bit and we will put that later on down here. And yeah, let's solder on this wire first and then the ground and VCC connection. I will just connect this one to pin 6 the Arduino. Let's twist that a little more. That's that. And now we will connect the ground and VCC wire, those two, to this buck converter. I will zoom in for you so you can see it a little bit better. So we are talking about this guy here. And we'll solder our wires to this capacitor. So the right side is 5 volts and the left side is ground. Now we will put this temperature sensor over here and jam it in here. What we also want to do is get some more of the tape and wrap it around the Arduino so it cannot make any contact to anything. But we leave the left side free so we can also connect our programmer up to it or FTDI. And before we are going to put the tape on we will also remove this regulator as well as those two LEDs to save more energy because we want this to use as least energy as possible. So let's see how we can do this. And yeah, let's wrap it in tape and then we can see and check if our fan control is working. So this is flame retardant tape. If anything goes wrong, this won't burn, but it also insulates everything. Oh, let's not get those contacts. Also, we have to make sure we are not pressing the reset button, because then the Arduino won't start. But we could have removed that also. Let's get a scissor. And I think the reset button is pressed, or is it? No, it's not. And yeah, let's connect this up to 12 volts again and then we'll see if it blows up or everything works fine. So you can see I already connected the ground and we'll just hook up the positive connection to the terminal and we'll see if anything blows up right now. The device is obviously turned off. So the big capacitors are already charged. It sparked a little bit. Let's get the washer on as well as the screw. So I'll just get this temperature sensor out of there and our board and hang it out to the side. So if it blows up we don't damage anything else. So let's turn it on and nothing is smoking so far. So let's check if when I touch the temperature sensor if the fans will turn on and clearly they are not turning on so something is not working. So it's the next day and as it turned out this didn't work quite well. I tried to disable the brownout detection and it didn't work. Also the voltage coming from the regulator didn't have 5 volts at all and the code on the microcontroller was not working quite right. So I fixed that and I found out when I connect the microcontroller to the USB port in the front right here it works. So we will unsolder those two wires here and use this broken cable and use its USB B connector and solder it to the microcontroller and then we'll just plug it in here in the front and feed the cable through one of those slits in the front to get power to our microcontroller. So let's do that. First we will get rid of those wires. We solder to the regulator. We will shorten black wire here because we don't need such a long wire. Then we'll get the USB cable and cut approximately this length off. We we'll have to push this back a little bit and get the isolation off. 
So there we have our four wires, but we should check if those red and black wire are really plus and minus five volts or ground and five volts because sometimes on these Chinese cables they are not matching. So for that I will get my trusty power bank and our multimeter. Let's turn that to 20 volts. Also strip the cables back. So I strip back the wires and we'll just plug it in to the power bank. It's currently turned off and let's connect it like this. Press the on button. And yeah, the wires are matching up and we are getting five volts. So let's disconnect it from the power bank so we don't kill it. Get rid of the multimeter. And then we will just cut off these two wires because we don't need them. We will also take some shrink tube. Those two should be enough. I will strip back the other wire. Then we'll use our rubber band trick again to hold the wire. We will twist those two together, hold it in place. Bend it over a little bit to get the shrink tube over and use the soldering iron to shrink it. So I forgot to feed the cable through first, so we have to cut this off again. So we just need to get this through first this time. We will put it through this hole. We will take some tape so we can feed the sleeve through as well. Get this around here. So now we should be able to get it through here. Then we will try soldering the wires together again. So what we will do now is to wrap some flame retardant tape around this whole thing again to protect the wires and everything else. Now we will just test this if it works and then we will put the whole unit back together. So let's connect the battery one more time and see if this works. So let's see if everything blows up. Didn't blow up. The fans spinned up for a second because the microcontroller booted. So we'll just use a hairdryer to heat up the temperature sensor to check if the fans will start spinning. So this might get a little bit loud, so noise warning. the fans did spin up. As you can see the fans are spinning and now if the temperature sensor cools down they should turn off again. So let's wait for that. They are almost off now and there they are turned off. So it works. So next we will turn it off again and we will stick the temperature sensor down here just like that and get the wires somewhere safe and then we will also put a small piece of tape around the top here so we just insulate those last few pins but so we can also take it off for changing the software and then we will stick this thing somewhere around here and then we can put the whole unit back together. Back at the bench we can now take a small piece this tape, wrap this around the top. We also put a little bit more on those connections down there because they are piercing through. So we make sure to not short anything later on when the unit is closed. Let's put it on here. That's much better. And then we will feed the cable through a little bit more and stick this down in there. Then we are ready to put the screws back in. That's that done. The last thing we will have to do is to plug in the USB cable in the front and then we should be all set up. And that's how you modify your power inverter or the fan control of your power inverter so it doesn't get controlled by load but instead by temperature. If you like this video give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more content like, share and subscribe and I will see you next time. Bye!